Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today we have three different side recipes for your collection. If you're anything like me, I get 23 points a day and I have to kind of make a choice when I'm planning out my dinner. Do I wanna spend my points on the protein or do I wanna spend my points on the side? And sometimes that means going a little bit of points for all of them and sometimes that means keeping my protein really really simple so i can have some really delicious interesting side dishes so that's what we have today unique side dishes that you probably haven't had yet i was not even planning on filming this intro today i was just gonna film the acorn squash but i have been having so much fun playing with this haunted mansion palette that I just, I had to get on camera because she, oh, because she, she just feels so cute. Look, oh, she's just so cute. Look at this. I love it. I love it. One thing I don't always love when you see a recipe for a really delicious side dish is that you might not know what to pair with it. So I'm also going to show you really abbreviated versions of the other things we're going to have that I'd pair with these sides as well. Up first, we have roasted acorn squash. It's this little guy, if you've ever seen these at the grocery store. It's delicious and buttery and velvet when you roast it. We're gonna do it with some Parmesan and some delicious herbs. But again, this is not a zero point side. These are the sides that are the, are, they're the star, okay? So we're gonna spend the points for these little beauties. I am only doing a half of a recipe today. The recipe is linked down below. It's from Downshiftology. So you'll see half of the recipe because I'm only cooking one because my daughter's not going to eat this and it's just going to be me and my husband. So this will be three servings worth for one acorn squash. And on this recipe, if you can splurge for a block of Parmesan instead of the pre-grated stuff, it will, your money will be well spent in this case, okay? If not, the other stuff is just fine. You, you use what you have. First, I have my oven preheated to 425. And as I get the acorn squash in there, that'll give me enough time to then get my chicken ready and get that in the oven so they'll all finish at the same time. Love it when that happens. Let's get to work. Let's prep this little guy just in case you've never done it. We're gonna cut off the top and bottom first. Then we're going to put it on the flat side so it's not rolling around on us. And we're going to cut it in half. And now we're going to scrape out these seeds. Now we have our guys nice and cleaned out. We're going to flip them back over so they're stable. And then we're going to cut them into slices. Now to this, we're gonna add two tablespoons of oil. I'm using avocado. We are roasting these on a higher heat, so make sure you use an oil that can handle that. We're gonna add one ounce of the freshly grated Parmesan. And if you don't have a food scale, it came out to the half a cup. And now we're going to add our seasonings. We have half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, a fourth of a teaspoon of basil, a fourth of a teaspoon of thyme, and it's supposed to be a fourth of a teaspoon of oregano, but I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't find it, so I added Italian seasoning. Keep some of these seasonings out because we're gonna season our chicken with some of that. We're gonna give this a toss. A lot of that Parmesan is not gonna stick to it. That's okay, we're gonna scoop it out and put it on it once it's on a sheet pan. Here's our uh, sad sheet pan, I promise it's clean. And we're going to just layer our slices. Oh my gosh, it, smell, it smells like pizza. It smells amazing. And so we don't want that goodness left behind. Make sure you add it onto your acorn squash. So in this goes for 20 to 25 minutes. We are gonna be making a dredging station. This is completely optional. You can have zero point chicken if you like, but I'm going to just be adding these plain breadcrumbs. You can use shake and bake, whatever. 
I'm gonna season these at breadcrumbs as I choose. So I did a little bit of extra Parmesan. I mean, it's probably like not even a quarter of an ounce because it's stuff so light. I'm gonna be using that basil that we used earlier and some Italian seasoning and always garlic powder. This over here is just one egg that I added two tablespoons of water and mixed it up really well. Now for mine, you've already seen me do this with the shake and bake. I'm gonna weigh mine and I'm just gonna count whatever weight it is for breadcrumbs. I'm not gonna do the Parmesan separately. And I let the store do the work for me. So I bought already split chicken. So it's already much thinner. This time I'm not gonna forget to uh, weigh mine. And I'm gonna go to grams cause it's a much more accurate. I've seasoned my chicken with salt and some of this Chef Paul, what's his face? Magic seasoning blends poultry magic. This stuff is really good with chicken with however you wanna serve the chicken. It goes good with lots of different types of side dishes. So if you're looking for a good way to have a zero point chicken, this and some salt and you're good to go. Just bake it, fry it or pan fry it, do whatever the heck you want. Breading situation. This makes a really good chicken parm too, if you do it this way. And then again, I'm reverse weighing. So I'm seeing how much breadcrumbs I pull out of here and then put it on a baking sheet. So that was 16 grams. And that was perfect timing because now our oven is ready for our chicken. When it's 15 minutes left on the timer, that's when our chicken goes in. I decided to pair this with a super simple salad mainly because my lettuce looked like I needed to eat it yesterday. I have about two tablespoons of the Olive Garden Light Italian. It's one point for two tablespoons. And I have five croutons for one point as well. If you've never had acorn squash when you roast it, it literally like melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Delicious and not bad on points. On to our next side. These are the ingredients you're gonna need for the side. This is a lemon and pistachio rice. It is so amazingly good. This is a HelloFresh recipe that I have stolen and, and will continue to eat. I even made this for my mom when she came down and she said, I need that rice recipe. It was so good. So for this is for four servings, we're gonna need a cup of jasmine rice, one lemon. I'm gonna take the zest off this lemon. You need two green onions. Mine are looking a little sad, so I have three. We're going to separate the whites from the greens. We're gonna use the whites in the cooking of the rice, and then we're gonna just use green as garnish for the rest of the meal. You're gonna need an ounce of pistachios. I'm going to chop these up into smaller pieces. Salt, pepper, and two teaspoons of avocado oil. Did I mention one and a half cups of water? If you want to join me in what I'm having on the side, I'm going to roast carrots. I have my oven preheating to 425. I'm just gonna slice these up, do a little spray, avocado oil, salt and pepper, and those will be good to go, about 25 minutes in the oven. And then I'm gonna cook some paprika chicken, basically just chicken with salt, pepper, and paprika, and cook it on the stove real fast. Let's go. Literally just avocado oil, kosher salt, and pepper. Cook more than you think. This is two pounds. Me and my husband will demolish most of this in one sitting because we love them, but these will shrink up. I have two teaspoons of avocado oil heating up on my stove into a, like a medium sized saucepan to cook my rice in. And now I'm going to slice my onions. So I'm gonna start with the whites. That's what I'm gonna use in my rice. And I'm gonna flip this over and cut off some of it. Let's see, remove any ones that look a little sad. I normally wrap this in like a wet paper towel and put it in a plastic bag and I forgot. So normally they last a really long time, but I just throw them in there this time. That's just a garnish for making things look pretty and tasting good. This is what we want here, that we're gonna saute this in our oil before we add our rice. Our oil's nice and hot, so we're gonna add the whites of those green onions. I'm just gonna cook this about one minute. Just gonna use my thing I tossed my carrots with. This is a technique they use a lot in HelloFresh where you cook the whites of the green onions in some oil before adding 
some kind of starchy thing like couscous or rice. You'll see this again when we make couscous. And it just adds so much like mellow, delicious flavor to it. Makes it something a little bit more unique and interesting. You can get a thing of green onions for like 58 cents and it can last you like three or four different sides. So it's just a really economical way of doing it as well. We're gonna let these get just, just ever so soft. Like I said, about one minute total. Been about a minute, so I'm gonna add my one cup of jasmine rice. My one and a half cups of water and a pinch of salt. I'm gonna do a two finger pinch of kosher salt. Now we're gonna let this come up to a boil. Once your rice is boiling, I'm gonna give it one last stir, just to make sure nothing's sticking. Put on the lid, move to a simmer and cook for 15 to 18 minutes. Mine typically cooks for 15. Our rice is cooking, so now we're gonna prep the ingredients that we're going to add to it once it's cooked. So I have my ounce of pistachios. I'm just gonna give this a quick chop. You want texture, so you're not looking for completely pulverized. I'm gonna add it back to my little container here. My husband just got home, so ignore my dog. You hear him screaming. We're also going to add the zest of one lemon. I wash all my produce when I get it home from the grocery store, but if you don't, make sure to wash this. You're about to scrape off the outside and use it. So you wanna make sure it's nice and clean. I have a microplane zester here. You're smart people. I'm sure you know how to zest a lemon, but if you're like me and your mama never taught you how, and you had to teach your mama how, this is how. We want only the yellow part. I'm going to put it over my container because as I zest, I like all that oil going into what I'm making. It just, I think it helps add a little bit more potency. So I'm going to scrape it once. You see how it's not like super white right there? That's what we want. If you get the white, if you sit here and you scrape this like this in the same spot, you're gonna get that white pith and it's gonna be bitter. You just wanna take off just the yellow. Every swipe, you're gonna rotate it just a little bit. We got 11 minutes left for our carrots. About two minutes short of that, so about nine minutes left on our rice. It's a good time to start our chicken. I got a nonstick pan here that I'm gonna spray with avocado oil. I have the thinner cut chicken just already from my grocery store this way. Literally just kosher salt, smoked paprika, and pepper. But season it however you like. I'm squatting down at a very awkward angle, but hello. Bye-bye. Do you want to tell them why you have such dramatic makeup on? Because I can. What did you tell me that you wanted to be when you grow up? A makeup artist. You're practicing? Got to yeah. get good at your craft? I mean, she's 10, y'all. That's pretty dang good. Ow. But you can't dance for, you know what, but... Oh, yeah, she got her moves from her mama for sure. <laughs> Nope, her dad. I take it back. That's fully her dad. <laughs> oh gosh. Stop the madness. Pan, uh, oh my gosh. Pan is heated up. This chicken should only take three to five minutes per side. Chicken is about ready to be flipped. So I'm just gonna spray this side with avocado oil. This is a perfect time to go ahead and push our rice off the burner. And we're just gonna let it, we're just gonna let it, oh, we're just gonna let it sit over there until we are ready to fluff it right before we serve everything. We got a minute and a half left on our carrots, about three minutes left on our chicken. And now you're gonna let it rest for five minutes. Seriously, don't cut it. You'll regret it. You'll have sad dried chicken. We want juicy chicken. Wait five minutes. Did we watch? Now that our chicken is ready, our carrots are ready, 
take the lid off of our rice, dump in our pistachios and our lemon zest, and give it a fluff with a fork, stirring all that in as you fluff it. Y'all, this rice looks so unassuming, but it is just absolutely delicious and totally worth the points. The only points from this meal tonight are coming from this rice, and it is definitely worth a zero point chicken to try it. We have our chicken. And take a fourth of the rice. A ton of carrots. A little bit of lemon. And a sprinkling of your green onions. A delicious seven point dinner at the star of the show. Today we have a creamy dill pork filet with couscous and green beans. Couscous is our unique side dish today. You can substitute the pork for chicken for lower points. This is a 10 point dinner and uh, we're gonna get to work. What we need is the Israeli couscous. You might have seen this in the other form where it looks really, really small like seeds, but this is actually a type of pasta. We're gonna need green beans, sour cream. I count regular dairy like the regular fat dairy as light or reduced fat, just because I do think Weight Watchers can be really low in calories. So this is a way uh, that I help because my body likes higher fat. So this is just one way I do that. You can absolutely just use the reduced fat sour cream if you'd like. I'm using, I can't believe it's not butter in substitution for butter. We have fresh dill. I'm using some better than bouillon chicken, two green onions. We're gonna cut this down. This is actually gonna be um, cut in half so we can throw one in the freezer and have this meal again later uh, in a few weeks we've got Dijon mustard red pepper flakes omit this if you don't like any spice at all and of course we have our salt and pepper we're going to start off by preheating our oven to 425 and we have our rack adjusted to the very top of the oven so that pork came with two of these skinny pork loins and it was two pounds so this one pork loin is about a pound. I'm gonna cut it in three pieces and each piece will be a serving. I'm doing a serving, uh, two servings today and that's what's in the recipe. However, I'm gonna make a little extra meat because my husband will eat the extra meat. So we have three smaller pieces like this. We're gonna season them with salt and pepper generously. We have kosher salt here. Meanwhile, I have my skillet heating up so that I can sear this and then we're gonna finish roasting it in the oven. There are instructions on if you wanna substitute with chicken, what to do. You basically just sear it and don't roast it because it cooks a lot faster. We're gonna let our skillet finish preheating. Pan's nice and hot. I sprayed it with avocado oil. That's the sound you wanna hear when you put your meat on. If you don't hear that sound, your pan is not hot enough. So we're just going to let this cook, turning it every couple minutes. We want all the sides to be brown. So we're going to cook it four to eight minutes. I put my green beans on half of the sheet pan. I sprayed with avocado oil and then I added salt and pepper. Roasting any kind of vegetable with just salt and pepper is my favorite way to eat it. It tastes the best to me. Uh, so like I said, we have it on 425. These are going to roast about 15 minutes. We're going to let that uh, pork sear and then we're going to put it over here on the side and then cook it all together. If you were doing your chicken instead of pork, you're going to go ahead and put this in as soon as the oven is preheated uh, since you won't need to, to roast it. If you're making more, like if you want to double the recipe, you use a whole sheet pan for the green beans and a pan for the pork and just cook them on two different layers, keeping both of them up to the top of the oven. All of our pork is seared, so this is gonna go in the oven for 15 minutes. Push my pan off the heat. We're gonna reuse that so we can make a sauce, and then we have our couscous about ready to go. Got our pan warming up here. I have one tablespoon of, I can't believe it's not butter light. I'll throw it in there. We're gonna let that melt. Meanwhile, get three fourths a cup of water ready, and if you're doing two servings like I am, then it's half a cup of couscous. 
and about a teaspoon of the Better Than Bouillon. While that's melting, we're gonna go ahead and toast our couscous with the I Can't Believe It's Not Butter. We're gonna let this cook two to three minutes. You want your couscous to start getting that beautiful golden brown color. That I Can't Believe It's Not Butter doesn't cook exactly like butter, and I do find it kind of disappears when you try to cook with it like this. So I did end up spraying some avocado oil just on top to help it turn brown but we still have the butter flavor from the, i can't believe it's not butter um, so if yours looks dry like this like mine just spray a little bit of whatever cooking oil spray you like i also really love this couscous the same way we cooked that rice minus the pistachios so you cook the the whites of the green onion and then add the couscous and toast it cook it all together and then fluff it with some lemon zest at the end it's really really good that way too but since i already did that with the rice i wanted to show you something a little different with a couscous now i'm going to add my water as well as my better than bouillon if you don't have the better than bouillon you can always substitute it for chicken broth we're going to bring this up to a boil reduce the heat add the lid and let it cook six to eight minutes i'm going to add a small pinch of salt but since that better than bouillon is quite salty i'm not going to add too much i can salt it at the end if it needs more got our couscous on we've got our green beans and pork in the oven we're going to start on our sauce i have a fourth cup of water and just under a teaspoon of the better than bouillon we're going to bring this up to a boil and let it simmer for a couple minutes really reducing down and uh, don't clean out your pan first all this bits from the pork that we seared is just really good flavor Take your time reducing this down. If it takes a little bit longer, then take the time because you don't want your sauce to be too runny. Right, you see how it's reduced down quite a bit. Now it's time to add the rest of our goods. We have three tablespoons of sour cream, two teaspoons of Dijon, one tablespoon of the I Can't Believe It's Not Butter. We also have our dill. I'm gonna add about half of the dill, which is about a tablespoon. We are, of course, going to season with salt and pepper. Just like that, the sauce is done. If it does get a little thick, you can just add a splash of water to loosen it up. Our pork is now ready to come out of the oven, but we need to rest it for five minutes. I'm letting my pork rest on a plate because I want to catch any delicious juices that sip out of this because I'm gonna throw it in my sauce. You wanna cook pork to 145 degrees. I threw my green beans back in the oven for about five more minutes because I like mine a little more tender. Meanwhile, our couscous is finished up and it is resting off the heat, but with the lid on, we're gonna leave it alone until we're ready to plate. Here, I'm just adding that juice from the pork into the sauce because that is flavor and we don't skip out on flavor here. I'm also adding a splash of water just to help loosen the consistency since it got thicker as the sauce sat. Now we're ready to fluff our couscous with a fork. You're gonna check your couscous for seasonings. Just take a little bite and see if you need more salt and pepper. I was happy with the way mine tasted without adding anything, so I left it as it was. Now that everything is on our plate, we're gonna add a sprinkling of that fresh dill. I love dill, so I love doing this, but if you don't love dill, maybe skip that part. And we're also gonna add some red pepper flakes. Again, if you don't like heat, skip this. I thought it was just a good extra flavoring without it being spicy at all. Adding fresh herbs is a great way to add a lot of delicious flavor to your meals without adding a bunch of calories. So I really love adding fresh herbs. And I was supposed to slice my pork before adding that sauce, so the sauce gets all over the pork. It's really delicious. I hope you give this one a try. All right, y'all, go forth and make many a side dish. I wish you well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.